Thanks for your company this afternoon. With me now, Ben Oquist and David Gazard. Ben, what's your sense of where we are? Obviously, in a, in a health sense, it's very encouraging still. I, I think we're in a good health spot. I go back to the start of this crisis and everybody was terrified that we were going to be like Italy or the United States and look how terribly uh, Trump is going and what's happening in the United States. I, I think we're watching a, a presidency unravel there from one of the worst uh, presidents the United States has ever had. I think Josh Frydenberg was right when he called him a dropkick all those uh, all that time ago. Uh, but we are not like that. And at the beginning of this, I think a lot of people thought we were going to be. And the Prime Minister seemed to be in a muddle in a communication sense. But you have to give him credit. Um, we've done well in a health sense. Uh, I think the economic debate has got a long way to go. Uh, but in a health sense, we've done a lot better. Big shout out to the ACT. Uh, I think we're... I, I'm here in Canberra and Boy, what a lucky place to live. Andrew Barr's got it just right. Uh, zero new cases today. But without the heavy-handed tactics that we've seen in uh, New South Wales and, and Victoria, uh, a, a, a state, a territory government doing a great job, not, uh, not heavy-handed, um, but getting that um, uh, infection rate right down. David Gazard, I spoke to Ben Morton earlier and he was keen to point out uh, that it's the Australian people that need to be thanked as well. And I think that for the Prime Minister, he's right to focus on that because, quite frankly, it's been a, you know, a superb reaction, I think, by and large. Absolutely. Everyone's played their part, haven't they? And uh, I think they've understood why they've had to play their part. And one of the reasons for that is that all levels of government have, by and large, worked together in a unified way uh, they've set aside differences and all acted, you know, to the first edict of government, which is uh, protect and secure your citizens. So um, faced with a global crisis, and it is a global crisis, it's certainly a national or was a national crisis. It probably is still unfolding before us, so we can't get complacent. But the Australian public have responded. Um, they've responded sensibly and they've, they've listened to their leadership, which has been conducted in a bipartisan fashion. One of the differences we've seen, David, has been at the, the school level, even if it is, you know, a difference in nuance. Uh, the yes. chief medical officer in Victoria, much more forceful in his recommendations uh, to keep schools closed. Then you hear from Nick Coatsworth today, the deputy chief medical officer federally, who says, look, the advice is uh, from the Lancet and others, uh, and many others, is that it simply is not a, a great threat to have the schools open. Um, where, where is that at in your view? And, and is some element of confusion in the National Cabinet fair enough given the different jurisdictions? I, I don't think there's been confusion. I think there's been different uh, interpretations around the states that have had the highest risk. So um, the, the, there's been consistent advice that's come from the Chief Medical Officer and the Prime Minister has been consistent throughout in saying, hey, let's keep our schools open. There's very little risk there. Um, some states, and they've had the power to do this, have decided to go another way and they, they, they close schools by and large, although the compromise point was to keep them open for uh, the kids of essential workers. I think given where we're at now, it seems to me by, by looking at the remarks of premiers uh, today that most are starting to move back to a position where the bias is going to um, reopening. I noticed Daniel Andrews today taking the Prime Minister's classification of what uh, deems to deem, he, he deems to be a, an essential worker and framing it around really what the definition of the Prime Minister was. I've seen Gladys Berejiklian today say that she's keen to get schools open. So it'll, it'll be a, a, a subject for debate at National Cabinet tomorrow. Um, but the, mm. the advice that has come from the... the, the, the um, the Chief Medical Officer and the, the, the Prime Minister has been consistent over the last month. Yeah, and, and I think consistent, um, Ben, with, with the expectation that our school communities are smart enough, are civic-minded enough to take the appropriate measures to, um, to suggest, oh, simply, oh, there'll be too many parents side by side, too many teachers side by side. I, I think it doesn't do them justice, to be honest, particularly when you look at the way the Australian communities responded more broadly. Uh, I'm with the, the Prime Minister uh, on this in the, in the sense that he is more forward-leaning in listening to the medical advice and saying that kids should be in school. 
Well, I'm reserving my judgment until after National Cabinet tomorrow. I'm a bit worried that the Prime Minister has been a bit too forward-leaning here, and if he runs ahead of what the Premiers are wanting, what they think is in the best uh, health and safety interests of the whole community, not just the students there, but a, a stronger lockdown for a bit longer to really uh, crush this curve, uh, then they're within their rights to do that. And the Prime Minister kind of front-running a bit too hard is likely to lead to a messy situation at National Cabinet, and that's the last thing we want. I saw your interview with Tanya Plibersek earlier, and I think she made a good point that the last thing the community wants is to see them fighting or squabbling. The fact is there is confusion. A lot of parents are not quite sure what the message is about going to or not going to, to, to the school, and I think the Prime Minister should be careful to walk cooperatively with the Premiers and not front-running, otherwise you will get confused messages and we'll get back to those late-night uh, press conferences and confusing statements coming out different from the Prime Minister and the, Treasur uh, and the Premiers, and that'll be bad for parents, that'll be bad for students, it'll be bad for confidence generally um, from the community in their government, and that's something to be avoided at all costs. David, do you think the government is open to uh, tweaking its economic support plan? Um, we've, we heard this week from Josh Frydenberg and Treasury that the unemployment rate is expected to hit 10% at uh, some point. It could have been 15% if not for the JobKeeper package. Is the government still open to tweak here and there in terms of just how broad that is? I think, as the PM said, you know, last week that, you know, I think he said the, uh, the big rocks are now in the jar. I think there's probably scope to, to tweak where necessary if they, if they um, uh, receive a case that, that's worthy of attention. Um, You've you got to remember that a lot of this policy has been made in a very, very speedy way. Um, people have been working you know, days and weeks um, w without you know, a day off. So it's, it has been formulated quickly. Um, and it, it, it's been done in a way that, you know, one size had, has had to fit all. So if there's, a, if there's a case that's worth listening to, I heard the Deputy Prime Minister on this yesterday, he said, of course we'll listen to it. So if it makes sense um, and, it, and it needs to come under consideration and, it, and it's worthy of attention, I think they'll do that. But if, if uh, you're asking me if there's a broad scope for large new spending packages, I, I don't think so. I don't get that sense. And I think probably, given where the numbers are at, it would be unwarranted in any case. David Gazzard, Ben Oquist, gents, thanks. We'll talk to you next week. Hopefully the uh, improvements continue on the, the health Absolutely. curve. Appreciate it. And thanks for your company this afternoon. Make sure you stay with Sky News after the break. Chris Kenny with the Kenny Report.